yaptım. In this video, I want to try and do three upgrades that I've been meaning to do for a long time, and if it all goes well, I should be able to do them all at the same time. The main thing I want to do is add a way cover. The ways on the lathe are probably one of the most important surfaces to take care of. They're a precision ground in surface and you want to protect them as much as you can. Unfortunately though, due to how a lathe works, all of the cutting action takes place above the ways and a lot of the chips will be thrown onto the ways. And if you're not that careful, they can get pulled under the carriage as you move it and that's not good for anyone. Now a simple workaround is to make a chip tray. Pretty much just bolt on a piece of sheet metal or a piece of angle bracket to the lathe and that should be able to collect most of the chips near the carriage. But I'd argue that on a lathe of this size, a way cover is the way to go. You can get these ones on eBay. I'm not sure the material, they're a vinyl like material and these are the ones to get. There are rubberized ones which you can get, which are very similar to the ones on the back of the mill, but they don't bunch up that well and I wouldn't get them. These are the ones that I'd recommend, they expand and contract really well and they only cost about 15 bucks on eBay. This one here is 140 millimeters wide and it expands to 1.5 meters. I bought it in this size because it's the same width as the carriage. Because of this, it will also do a good job at not only covering the ways, but it should cover the lead screw and protect it from a good amount of chips. The lead screw and half nut are really a magnet for these small chips and protecting them is probably a good idea. You can get dedicated lead screw covers, but I don't use the lead screw that much, so this should be good enough. Now to hold the cover in place, I'll have to make some type of bracket. Now this might seem like overkill, but I'm going to be using this scrap piece of 30 by 50 steel to make the bracket. There are some holes and a few partial cuts, so I'll cut those away. I'll be using this large piece of steel to help brace the carriage and hopefully add some rigidity when I'm cutting. I never really figured out why they made these cutouts in the lathe. On other mini lathes, they don't have them, and all it does is reduce the overall mass and rigidity of the carriage. Back when I added the carriage lock last year, I noticed a small gain in rigidity, so I'm going to try and replicate that here on the other side, only using a lot more mass. With the excess cut away, I'll have to clean it up in the mill. There are some large flat surfaces that I'll clean up first with the fly cutter. I'll do the rest of the cleanup with these roughing end mills. I've been using them a lot ever since I bought them. The finish isn't as good as a regular end mill, but I can do much deeper cuts without any chatter, and they produce small, cooler chips, which is really good. I need to remove a fair amount of the bottom material and instead of using the fly cutter, I'll use the end mill. And it's really cutting through it really nicely.
And that's the part done for the moment. Before I'm able to test fit it, I'll have to remove the carriage from the lathe. A problem I ran into last year when I did the carriage lock is the fact that the cutout is tapered and it's slightly convex. Now the last time I did this, I filed it down by hand so I could add the carriage lock, but thankfully now I have the milling machine so I can do it a lot quicker. And you can probably see from this angle just how out of square the cutout really is. Now I didn't machine at all, you can probably still see the red bits that are still painted, however if I tried to machine those, I'd be cutting into the cross slide, which would be a big problem. A quick test fit shows that it all fits nicely together. It doesn't need to be tight or anything, since it's all going to be bolted on. I'll quickly mark out the location of the guideway, and I'll put it back in the mill to cut out a slot. I'll use an end mill to cut a regular rectangular slot. The material won't be touching the guideways, so I didn't think there was any need to cut it to match the profile. I'll also need to cut a small step down in the side that's facing inwards. This will stop the bigger cross slide from crashing into the bracket. With that done, I'll deburr it with a file and set it aside for the moment. Next, I'll drill the holes for the bolts. I'll drill the holes in the carriage first, and then I can replicate it in the bracket. I'll find the edge with the edge finder, and then I'll write down the hole locations so I can replicate it later. With the holes drilled, I'll tap them for M8. With that done, I can drill and counterbore the three holes in the bracket. Now I did make one mistake in doing this. When I was planning it, I didn't factor in the bolt's head size, so when I drilled the counter bore, it broke through into the slot. It's not a huge problem, though it is going to bug me, but thankfully it will all be covered by the way cover. The final thing left to do is drill three holes along the top edge, and I'll tap them for M5. I'll use them to hold the bracket which will hold the way cover in place. I'll cut down some cap head screws and then I'll bolt them in. Apart from one that's a different colour and that probably will bug me, it looks really nice, though thankfully it will be covered by the way cover. The bracket's also the same height as the way cover too, which is really good. To hold it in place, I'll be using this right angle piece of extruded aluminium. It's a little bit big, so I'll have to trim it down to size. Now there are a lot of ways of trimming thin stock in the mill, but my preferred method is to double side tape it to a piece of scrap wood or MDF and cut it in the mill. It holds it quite well and it stops it from rattling around. 
I'll trim the ends and then I'll drill three holes so I can bolt it down. And it's not super necessary, but the aluminium was all scuffed up, so I cleaned it up with some 320 grit. Now back at the lathe, I realised that with my new bracket in place, the way cover was too long. So I used a pair of scissors to cut it down. It's not really a problem though, because this thing was intended to expand to 1.5 metres, and all I really need it to extend to is about 25 to 30 centimetres. And a quick test fit shows that it all bolts together really nicely. With the carriage done, we can now look at bolting in the other end. I'll start off by cutting off a piece of steel bar. I'll clean it up in the mill, and then I'll use the mill to cut a step down. I'll drill two holes so I can bolt it in. Now there aren't any existing holes that I can use, so I'll mark out two holes, and then I'll drill and tap them. So let's get it installed. I went back and recut the material at the carriage end, so the bolts now hold the material in place, and it holds it a lot better than it did before. Next, I'll attach the other end using the bracket that I made before. There's a piece of thick plastic at the other end of the way cover that the steel compresses against to hold it in place, hence the need for that step down that I milled in before. And with that, that's the mod done. And you know what, it looks really nice. The way and lead screw are nicely covered, and I really like the look. Testing it in steel, you can see that the way cover protects the ways from most of the chips. And thankfully, it's really easy to clean with a shop vac. As well as that, I can feel that the lathe is cutting a lot better. The extra mass is helping to dampen vibrations, and I can really feel that it's a lot more rigid. And I don't know if it's just me, but I feel that it's taking nicer cuts and leaving a better surface finish than it was before. So I'm really happy with that. Before I finish off, I should address the fact that I only added the way cover to the front half of the lathe. Realistically, very few chips make it to this side of the lathe, and it really is only a problem if I'm doing brass, because brass tends to spit chips in every direction. In my opinion, it really is up to you if you want to spend the time and add a way cover to the back, but for me, it's not a huge issue, so I'm not going to do it at the moment, Though I do have the other half of the way cover that I didn't use, so it's always an option for the future. Overall, it's a really good upgrade. You probably don't have to do the whole rigidity upgrade that I did, but a way cover is certainly a good upgrade to put on your list. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.